Last time on Dragon Ball Super, Vegeta and Goku have overcome countless enemies throughout their history. But their greatest challenge yet, the Tournament of Power, was unlike anything they've ever been through before. During the battles, a fusion by the name of Kefla was born. Intrigued by this power, both Zenos are eager to see something fight like that again. So, just a couple of days after the tournament, they called Goku and Vegeta to their palace, waiting to see something impressive. I am neither Goku nor Vegeta. What if Gogeta and Vegito fought? So, uh, what'd you call us here for, Zeno? The two Senos floated over to each other, excited to see them again. Beerus, Whis, and the Kaioshin stood not too far behind, bowing. One Zeno told the Universe 7 gods to leave, as they only needed Goku and Vegeta for now, but for the Kaioshin to leave behind his Potara. He was confused but complied. Beerus asked what's going on, but the Kaioshin covered the god's mouth, and Whis teleported them all out of there. The Grand Priest floated over to the Saiyans with a smile. Welcome, Saiyans. I'm glad you two responded to the request promptly. You see, they want to see Fusion. Fusion? Yes. Zeno was very impressed with Kefla during the tournament and wanted to see yours. But which one? We would have to practice the dance. We haven't done it before. No way! The future Omni King jumped out of his chair. Dance? We only thought you could do it with the earrings. Can you show us both? Can they fight? Goku explained that they could show them a fusion, but there was only two of them. Thus, they can't really fight one another. They're basically the same being as far as they're concerned. Plus, they've never done the fusion dance before. They would have to practice. The Grand Priest smirks, saying that it is only an inconvenience. He snapped his fingers, and the room around them changed into an asteroid. The Grand Priest opened his palm to reveal the pair of earrings that was left behind by the Kaioshin, floating them over to Goku and Vegeta. The Saiyans were still confused. Who were they going to battle? The two Zenos closed their eyes, and when they opened them back up, a blinding light brought forward a new warrior. The fighter was already mid-kick and sent Vegeta flying off. Though the Saiyan recovered, he was very impressed by the amount of power. It was out of this world. Once the light settled, the new fighter was revealed. What the? Who are you people? This must be another one of Omega Shenron's tricks. Come on, bring me back to the real fight. Please settle down. You may learn a thing or two during this battle. I promise you, you'll return back to the world you came from promptly. Goku, Vegeta, put the Pataras on. What the? That form? It's nothing like I've ever seen before. Goku and Vegeta. Ha! This really is an interesting technique. Making me fight ourselves? Goku and Vegeta nodded at each other, placing their Potaras on, their bodies slamming against one another to bring out their fusion, Vegito. I am neither Goku nor Vegeta. I am the man who will defeat you. Of course, you're the result of the two of us using the fusion technique. I'm Vegeta and Kakarot together. Guess that makes me Vegito. A fusion from the fusion technique and a fusion from the Potara earrings. I wonder which is stronger. Let the battle of the fusions begin. The two fusions rushed towards one another instantly. Vegeta threw a right hook, which Gogeta dodged under. Gogeta spun to hit Vegeta with the back of his leg, but Vegeta did the same. Both their legs crashing against one another caused a shockwave that made both Senos say whoa in amusement. Vegeta grabbed onto Gogeta's face, pushing it down against the ground and filling his hand with ki. But as soon as Gogeta reached the floor, he disappeared. It wasn't the real one. Vegito's eyes widened as he turned around to be met with a punch to the face. The Potara fusion staggered back, but extended his hand out to shoot five ki bullets from the tip of his fingers. Gogeta reflected them off, but this gave Vegito the chance to grab him from behind, throwing him back down to the ground and rushing in with a spirit blade in order to slash him across the chest while he was down. Gogeta was hurt, but he flipped backwards as Vegito descended with his arms crossed. They were both incredibly powerful, but who was stronger? This blue form or the red one? The two stared down at each other, panting. Drops of rain began to drop, and before even one of them could touch the ground, the fusions pushed themselves forward one more time, each punch slicing through the water droplets. One of the Zeno asked why it started to rain, after all, the Grand Priests controlled the arena. He simply said, To soothe the mood of the battle. Both Vegito and Gogeta kept their arms crossed, 
as they threw kick after kick. I can do this too, you know! The final kick pushed them away. Gogeta smirked at Vegito while lowering his arms. Vegito looked confused until Gogeta hovered over to him so fast. Gogeta ended up behind Vegito, who started to turn around. But as soon as he moved his head, a wind barrage attacked him. Every hit hurt Vegito more and more, but he wasn't out of the game just yet. Vegito got ready for the next attack, but it never arrived. Instead, Gogeta simply stared at Vegito, who felt something strike him hard. It was a Kiai. In response, Vegito slid across the ground, knocking over Gogeta. Vegito instantly grabbed him by the leg, spun him around and threw him right between the two Zenos. Their eyes widened as Vegito rushed between them and right behind Gogeta at full speed, spinning them in their own chairs. Gogeta stopped himself as he was flying off, getting ready to charge up a big bang Kamehameha. However, Vegito disappeared behind Gogeta and instinctively bit down on the first thing in front of him, Gogeta's tail. What the hell? Gogeta screamed in pain, spinning and whipping his tail so Vegito would be sent flying off. In an instant, both fusions went to attack each other. Vegito kicked Gogeta in the chest, followed by a big bang attack. Gogeta dodged the blast and instantly shot out his own big bang attack. The two blasts exploded behind the fusions when Vegito dodged it. The two panted for a second as the rain fell on their faces. They were both very impressed. Gogeta wiped some blood off his face. The fusions pulled back their fists, filling them both full of ki and threw their most powerful punch. The fists connected against each other's faces, coming to a standstill. A huge wave of wind whiffed up from under them as cracks began to appear in the sky. The Grand Priest looked up, then back at the fusions. A single sweat drop fell. I've gotta admit, admit the Batara earrings sure are something, something. But you're gonna have to stay, stay like that forever. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like you don't know. The Batara fusion is only permanent for the Kaioshin. However, I still have an extra 30 minutes, you don't. No way! I don't know how much longer I've got! Beerus, Weez, and Kaioshin waited in the Kaioshin realm. When they all heard a crack, Beerus wondered what was happening, and on Earth, Gohan, who was training with Piccolo, sensed something incredibly powerful. Meanwhile, in the Dragon Ball GT universe, Omega Shenron looked around everywhere, but he couldn't find the presence of Gogeta anymore. To him, it had only been one second, but once he heard the crack, he not only felt the power of Gogeta, but also something else. He was worried. Oob closed his eyes. He could feel his master's key, a lot of it. The two finally pulled back their arms, only to instantly throw more punches, getting faster and faster. Every punch cracked the sky more and more until light and colors appeared around them, but the fusions didn't even realize it. They couldn't see it. All they could see was the shadows and lines from every single punch thrown. Their auras expanded behind them, a blue one and a red one. To everyone else but the Grand Priest and Zeno, they would seem endless. The last punch finally made them retreat backwards. Gogeta put his arm out, and a giant orb of blue key generated. Let's see you survive this one! Vegito pulled back his arm, his orb of key being surrounded with electricity. It's over! Final! The blast collided and created a huge hurricane around them, sparks of electricity swirling as the rain stopped. Future Zeno went over to watch the fight behind Gogeta, while the present one went behind Vegito. They had never seen anything like this before. At this point, it's up to you to decide the winner. These two are incredibly powerful, even I can't tell who will win. Go to the respective timestamp as shown on the screen to watch one of the possible realities out there. The one you pick will be your truth. Now, warrior, choose your destiny. A red aura engulfed Vegito, an aura that overshadowed Gogeta's own. The Super Saiyan 4's eyes widened as the yellow and blue beam grew larger and larger. He couldn't keep up. The Big Bang Kamehameha finally broke apart and dispersed, but the final Kamehameha never reached Gogeta as Vegito had traveled through the blast upwards to finish up the fusion dance with one single punch downwards. A beam of light was emitted from the key covered hand upwards as Gogeta came crashing down against the asteroid, creating a huge crater that broke it in two. Vegito crossed his arms, the dust settling around him. He chuckled proudly. It seems the Elder was right. The Patara earrings effects are stronger than those of the fusion technique. Oh, you got me. I've got to admit, the Patara earrings are really something. 
Gogeta struggled to get back up, but if this really was a trick by Omega Shenron that he needed to push himself forward, this would be his last Big Bang Kamehame. But once Vegeta looked back down, Gogeta was gone. Vegito knew he had won, that's all that mattered. The Grand Priest descended, telling Vegito that Gogeta's time was up and that he had to be returned to his universe. Huh? My, My time, time is, is up too, huh? huh? Well, well I, hope I hope I get, get to, to fight, fight him again. again. The one became two again. That fusion dance, that Super Saiyan, he didn't stand a chance against us. Yeah, even though that big whatever attack was cool, no way we'd ever fuse like that. Vegito takes a lot from us anyways. Right, I prefer to fight alone. The Grand Priest and Zeno thanked them for their display, with one Zeno explaining just how much he loved the Potara, and the other saying that maybe they should try to fuse sometime. The Grand Priest and the Saiyans quickly talked them out of it. Vegeta said to Goku that he knew the Potara fusion would win. The team was returned over to the Kaioshin planet. I see your battle went well. You two have progressed a lot, but the fact that it took Zeno to get you two to fuse again tells me you need a little more teamwork. Not that you'll ever have to fuse again, right? That was the end of one reality. It was a satisfying end for both Lord Zeno, but I do wonder what the others would have been like. If you wish to live through other endings, go to the timestamps. Otherwise, go to End Slate to finish off. Gogeta was starting to sweat. He thought the combined powers of the Ultimate Super Saiyans would make him the strongest fusion around. With this blue-haired Vegito, his power was unreal. Super Saiyan 4 was supposed to be the greatest form a Saiyan could reach. He couldn't lose. So, you guys are able to use the power of the gods, huh? Well then, I'll just go beyond that and defeat you! Gogeta began to scream as a reddish, purple aura enveloped his body. The Zenos gasped as both Vegito and even the Grand Priest weren't sure what they were seeing. A sudden realization hit the Grand Priest. That fusion was able to break their limits and enter the realm of the gods. Somehow, some way. Vegito laughed in delight as Gogeta started to unleash all of his key. You think you can take this on? Big Bang Kamehameha times 100! The blast pushed back Vegito's Kamehameha as it consumed his energy beam. Vegito moved to dodge out of the way, but Gogeta saw it coming. Gogeta smirked as he crossed his arms. He dashed towards Vegito, and it seemed as if multiple copies of Gogeta were rushing towards the Potara fusion at once. Vegito attempted to scattershot the clones, but none of them connected. Gogeta finally appeared in front of Vegito, crushing what looked like a bunch of stardust in his hand, only to let it go and slash Vegito into a blinding set of sparkles. It seems that our fused form from the fusion dance was a bit stronger. Your power was unbelievable, but I won't lose the next one. Let's have a rematch right now! Hold your horses! I'm sorry, but my fusion is about to wear off! We won't be able to have a rematch for a while! <laughs> what a pain! It looks like the Patara transformation is actually the more powerful one! I win by default! Hey now, that's not fair! At the moment, Gogeta defused back into base GT Goku and Vegeta. Vegito laughs. But as soon as he's finished, he defuses as well. It seems like he may have used too much power during the fight, reducing his time limit to about the same as Gogeta's. Huh, the fusion's over already. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Using God Key for the first time is really straining on the body. God Key? Don't worry, you'll get used to it. What was that form of Super Saiyan though? I've never seen something like that before. You gotta tell me how. This is Super Saiyan 4. However, GT Goku is cut off when the Grand Priest thanks them for the battle. With a snap of his fingers, he heals the two fighters before teleporting them away to their native timeline. The Zenos were extremely pleased with their battle. They asked DBS Goku and Vegeta to show them just how to do the fusion dance. Goku happily accepts, but Vegeta puts a hand over his face, whispering awkwardly at Kakarot that it may not be a good idea to teach two Zenos how to fuse, especially if they themselves hadn't practiced the dance before. Meanwhile, on a devastated Earth, Omega Shenron is standing still, waiting for his prey to return. GT Goku and Vegeta suddenly appear before them. So you vermin finally decided to crawl back and face me, ready to face your doom? No, we're here to defeat you. Kakarot, remember that strange power we felt earlier? That god key, was it? Why don't we give this overgrown reptile a taste of true power? <laughs> you got it, Vegeta. Ah! Far away. 
On a planet in an unknown sector in the universe, an angel looks up. Whis had already been drinking tea when he suddenly felt two enormous powers flare up, which caught his attention. Whis is shocked at first of what he's feeling, eventually smirking. So you've finally done it, Goku and Vegeta. It took you long enough. Inside the castle, a cat stirs in his sleep when the roar of an Ozaru rings on his head. Beerus the Destroyer bolts awake from his slumber before focusing on the energy he's feeling. The energy of Goku, Vegeta, and Omega Shenron. Beerus grins mischievously. At last, after all these years, they're here. The Super Saiyan Gods! That was the end of one reality. It was a satisfying end for both Lord Zeno, but I do wonder what the others would have been like. If you wish to live through other endings, go to the timestamps. Otherwise, go to End Slate to finish off. They were at a standstill, but Vegito laughed. The Big Bang Kamehameha was finally pushed back. It looked like Vegito maybe had the upper hand, even if for a second, but then everything stopped. Thank you for your time, but both of your fusions are about to end. This is a proper stopping point. Good luck with that dragon problem, Goku. We will meet again. Wait, Wait no, I can still- Gogeta disappeared, his blast along with him. Meanwhile, Vegito's Kamehameha dissipated into nothingness, and the fusion undid itself. Man, that was incredible, Vegeta. They were so strong. They were us, Kakarot. Of course they were strong. Although that form was like nothing I've seen. What do they even call that? Super Saiyan monkey? Maybe Super Saiyan 4? Don't be stupid, Kakarot. It doesn't even have golden hair. Maybe we should try the fusion dance sometime. Ha! As if. Even if the world depended on it, I would never fuse with you. Unknown to our heroes, the Gogeta they had just fought was having a little bit of trouble from where he came from. He had returned just as the Big Bang Kamehameha blasted off, and he immediately defused. What the? Damn it, time's over already! That fight was awesome, but it looks like we're back to fighting Omega. Huh, if we had those Potara, we would definitely win. Maybe I could even get that blue form. If you hadn't messed around, we would have gotten here faster. Now get ready, Kakarot, this is our final battle! The two Zenos went over to Goku and Vegeta, shaking their hands and celebrating. This was the most incredible fight, and they really hoped they could see something like this again. Though the Grand Prix said that maybe not for a while. Goku and Vegeta will have their hands full for a good bit of time. Before Goku and Vegeta could even ask what that meant, they were teleported off. And once they arrived, Whis smiled at them, telling them that they had grown, even if just a little. I guess me and you are gonna have to fight together like this from time to time, huh? That was the end of one reality. It was a satisfying end for both Lord Zeno, but I do wonder what the others would have been like. If you wish to live through other endings, go to the timestamps. Otherwise, go to End Slate to finish off. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this different version of a what if. I thought it would be fun to shake up the format a little bit and let you guys choose the ending. Let me know in the comments which one you chose, and which one is your favorite fusion. I kinda like Vegito myself, but I tried to be as fair as possible. Also, let me know what you thought of this surprise video. I may do stuff like this in the future as well, if you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to share, leave a like, and a comment. That really helps me out a lot. This video was done ahead of time. So I'm sorry if you became a member in the time between me making this video and it being up on YouTube. Shout out to the Super Saiyan Legend and Super Saiyan God members of the channel. Brian Skidmore, Hannah Rowan, Mateo is Lost, Cage, Sacred Saiyan, Neo Whitcomb, Sith Lord, Darko Roktonsky, Jin1412, Obi-Wan Fun, Midnight Combatant, Fox Die, Eric Dragon, The Real Samuel Randall, Anthony Notes, and Zachary Croy. Thanks so much for your support, guys. This channel would just not be around without you all. If you want to know how to get your name shouted out in the next video, be sure to click the join button down below. There's a few extra perks too that I hope you guys enjoy. Before I leave you guys, thank you to Professor Chimp who helped me writing the Gogeta ending to the story. I wanted it to have a different flair than the Vegito and the neutral ending. And a special thank you to Geeks for Fun. Him and I got in a call and brainstormed a bunch of ideas, and this was one of them. If you haven't checked out their Saiyans in DC story, be sure to watch it. I don't say it a lot, but follow me on Twitter at ShareEnergy. You're always welcome to share what if stories with me. Just talk to me and all that stuff. 
I'm there like all the time. Also, this was actually supposed to come out on my birthday, July 1st. But I realized that I was getting so much love and fan art during that day that I wanted to include it at the end of this video. So thank you guys and shout out to y'all that made some gifts for me. I really appreciate it and thank every single one of my subscribers and viewers. You guys really rock. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying your summer and until we meet again. See ya. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Smugstick, unless you want to be destroyed. Lord Beerus, that's hardly fair. But also, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when he uploads new videos.